The Western genre was the face of cinema for about half the 20th century, sort of like superheroes in today's entertainment. Their popularity led to mass production, with some years during the 50s and 60s having over 100 Western movie and television productions. Eventually the harp died down, killed by oversaturation and lack of evolution, until Italian director Sergio Leone released a trilogy of Western films, A Fistful of Dollars, For A Few Dollars More, and probably the most famous, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. This skyrocketed star Clint Eastwood as the face of Western heroes, as well as redefining the genre, making stories gritty and dark with characters not being so black and white, but still keeping some of the fantastical elements of the Wild West, all combining to create legendary cinema. These new spaghetti westerns, named after the director's heritage, not only reinvented the genre but became the key iconographer. Come on, let's be honest, when I say Wild West, you hear the theme from The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. So do you think the Western genre will ever make a comeback in modern cinema? Companionship is hugely important to many people, and one of the most popular ways is to have pets. It's estimated that 57% of the population of the world own a pet, meaning more people own pets than don't, with dogs being the most popular by far, then followed by cats with any other pets coming quite close to each other after those two. The popularity of having a pet has increased tremendously in the last 200 years, however it's believed the domestication of animals was more than 30,000 years ago with dogs, which is 10,000 years before even horses. But it was only a few thousand years ago that pretty much every type of pet we have today was domesticated. Now pretty much any animal can be a pet somewhere, such as tigers, alligators, sloths and more. For example, more tigers are in legal captivity than in the wild, with 5,000 against the wild 3,800. Superheroes are more popular than ever, dominating the box office for the last decade, but they have been around for almost a century. Now there is some dispute over who is the first superhero due to the idea of what do you count as a superhero, but I have gone with the first costumed crime fighter as that's the key iconography of superheroes, meaning the first is a character called the Phantom. Now yes, there have been characters with superhuman abilities before him, but he was the first to have an actual super suit, aka skin tart, and fight crime directly. Although he in fact does not have any superpowers similar to Batman, he definitely still represents the blueprint for all that would come, created by Lee Falk, debuting in 1936 in a newspaper strip two years before Superman and three before Batman who he shares more similarities with. Almost all major comic book companies have published stories with the Phantom, including Marvel and DC. So do you think it's fair to call the Phantom the first superhero? superhero, or does the title belong to someone else? Prussia was a state part of the German Empire with its origins dating back to pre-13th century with old Prussians who were indigenous people amongst the Baltic people, living in a region of Prussia that is now part of modern day Poland. Over hundreds of years, the region of Prussia has changed quite a lot, with ever-changing borders with other German states. Eventually, Prussia was based in Brandenburg, which you probably haven't heard of, but its capital was Berlin. Yes, the same Berlin we have today. From 1701, it was the driving force behind uniting Germany, becoming the strongest state within the German Empire by 1871. Although at the end of the First World War, the German Empire dissolved with the abdication of the monarchs, becoming a republic and becoming just Germany, with the state of Prussia fading into history. The euro is a currency used in, you guessed it, Europe. 19 countries use the euro, including 349 million citizens as of 2019. However, it is still accepted in many countries outside of the EU and by ones in the EU with their own primary currency, such as Britain, which accepts the euro even without being part of the EU, but uses the pound sterling as its main currency. It follows a similar system to the US dollar and British pound, dividing into 100 cents together making 1 euro. The euro is one of the world's highest used currencies, roughly used the same as the US dollar, which together make around 80% of the world's currency. The cross-country currency was used to create a more stable value, as currencies are known to fluctuate. And this kind of worked with businesses around the world trading in euro due to its reputable stability overall, saving money over time. So do you think having set currency for continents would be better or worse than what we have now? The the guitar is one of the most recognised instruments in music, with its origins dating all the way back to the Egyptians, with evidence finding guitar-like instruments but only having three strings as opposed to the iconic six we know in modern day. Even with their long history, their booming popularity happened in the 1800s. Before that, they were considered amateur, as true musicians would play piano, violin or flute. Now, the guitar is present in pretty much every genre of music, with around 50 million players worldwide. However, it still only comes in second, with the piano remaining the world's most popular instrument. So, do you play guitar or any instrument. Genghis Khan is one of the greatest rulers of all time, founding the Mongol Empire which became one of the largest empires in history. He conquered much of Central Asia and China, with his conquests causing destruction on a huge scale, leading to drastic population declines due to mass extermination and famine. The total deaths caused by Khan's military campaigns is estimated up to 60 million by some historians. Before being known as the Great Khan, he was born in 1162 by the Onon River, originally named Temujin, with his father being poisoned and dying 
dying when he was only young, as well as his family being expelled outside the tribe, and then himself being captured into slavery but later escaping. Although he was so famous, there is no definitive information on how he looked. Yet it's said that his bloodline lives on to this day with his DNA estimated to be present in 60 million men. So do you think you could be related to Genghis Khan? Denim was invented in the 1500s in Genoa, Italy, but the word jeans comes from the French translation of the city being jeans. However, jean weaving became modernised by Levi Strauss in the 1870s, made for the working class due to the materials being cheap, and were definitely more geared towards being workwear, owned by miners and railway workers for example. Nowadays everyone wears jeans, with research stating an average American has seven pairs of jeans. However, North Korea is the only country in the world to ban jeans, so how many pairs of jeans do you have? Coca-Cola is one of the most recognised brands in history, invented by pharmacist John Pemberton in 1886. Inspired by the drink, Vin Mariana, which was a mix of Bordet red wine and cocaine. Coca-Cola was originally sold as a tonic that would relieve headaches and exhaustion, and yes, it did include a small amount of cocaine until 1903. Deriving its name from its ingredients, the coca plant, which cocaine comes from, and the cola plant, which had the caffeine. However, Pemberton sold the company in 1888 and died shortly after, but businessman Asa Griggs Candler grew it to the empire it is today. Among its achievements, it invented multipacks for drinks, was the sponsor of the first Olympic Games, and is the most consumed fizzy drink around the world. Also, Coca-Cola hasn't changed its logo drastically in over a hundred years. Now that's some timeless branding. So, is Coca-Cola your favourite fizzy drink, or is it something else? Breaking Bad is the greatest show ever. Technically. Now, art is always up to personal opinion, but looking at the show factually, it kind of is. Being the most critically acclaimed show across multiple online review platforms, and earning the title of highest rated TV series in the 2014 edition of the Guinness World Record. That title was mainly based off its score on Metacritic, coming in at 99%. During its run, Breaking Bad was nominated for 248 awards, winning 92 across all different roles in production, writing and acting. The show is also universally praised by fans, with most people who've seen it speaking in a positive light. So is it fair to call Breaking Bad the best show ever? Let me know. You just got some facts. <laughs>